Good morning, everybody. This is Mark Crawford of Sustainable Frugal Living, and it is December 15th, and we're getting some sunshine, as you can see. It's really not that cold, but I got thin blood, so <laughs> I'm covered up. Anyway, I wanted to give you a, a quick update of our garden. Uh, we've been somewhat successful. Come with me, and we'll check it out. Okay, this is our, we're in our new structure here that we created with the free pallets. We got videos on that you can check out. We've got the uh, landscape fabric inside, lined inside with uh, compost. We actually, we have the, the core Hugel method. We call it the Kugel, I guess. And there's, like I say, there's videos on that. Uh, we got the rest of it filled up with uh, compost. Now look at the earlier video, you would have seen this was full of cucumbers uh, against this welded wire here. And we were able to harvest uh, quite a few cucumbers. And Teresa has pickled uh, for dill pickles and uh, bread and butter pickles, I think they call them. It was really cool. And then the rest of them had in our salads. Uh, against the, the end over there, we had ochre plants. We had ochre plants over, the, over there as well. Ochre plants didn't make it. We got a little bit of harvest from the okra, but not much. Mainly just small ones for salads. The, the freezes that we had, we had some early freezes here in Texas, as well as across the country. As the second freeze pretty much did in the okra plants and, and killed them. So the rest here were uh, snap beans and they were bush beans and we've got we got a lot of those those were very delicious and very good and then we had some more okra planted down here you'll see in the other video but anyway you, this bed i uh, bean plants roots in the soil that actually adds to the nitrogen to the soil as it breaks down and i, I tilled it up and chicken manure compost in this area I put it with leaves, and so that one's put to bed for the winter. That one's done. Now this bed over here, we had tomato plants here, and we probably got maybe a dozen tomatoes off of that. And of course, the like I said, the okra plants were here. They froze out and died. We got a few, but the tomatoes, uh, we actually had to plant the. We had to harvest the tomato plants. Uh, before the second freeze because we knew it was going to be a hard one and would kill them. So um, several, uh, probably about six, half a dozen of the tomatoes we had to put in the house and let them just ripen in there. The rest of all this is beets and they're a root crop so they've done well through the freeze. They've been okay and uh, still growing healthy and strong. As you can see here, we did an intense planting method with the beets. So they're not going to be real large. On over in this area here, we have our carrots. And Again, we did an intensive planting for our carrots, which you can go either way. If you do the regular spacing, you'll get the larger carrots. If you do intensive spacing like this, you get more carrots, but you're gonna get the smaller salad sized carrots. That's what we were going for here. Another reason we weren't really sure how well they would do, and you can see here, they did very, very well. <laughs> they did awesome. Uh, in one of the videos, um, I documented what they look like. They look pathetic after the thunderstorm just beat them down, but obviously they all came back very, very well. So we've got lots of basically baby carrots. And over here, the last bed of our four new ones. It is, uh, you can see, put to bed. We did the same thing over here with the the compost and leaves it put to bed. The only thing is we left is the sugar pea plant. The one sugar pea plant that we didn't tie up to the welded wire 
we just left it on its own and it actually survived. If you look in the earlier videos, we had like three or four plants here that were just hanging down. I'm pretty sure what I did wrong on these, just for your knowledge, is I planted them too shallow. And so they grew, but the roots weren't very deep and that was detrimental to the plants. So they didn't make it. But this one here, we, we just kept kind of pushing up this way so it would stay out of the dirt and it actually survived. There's a couple of plants there. And this one actually has some um, sugar peas on it to harvest. I'll show you one, maybe you can see one right there. This one right here. That one right there is ready to harvest, but it doesn't have a whole lot on it, but the one surviving sugar pea plant. Okay. That's it for our new area. Let's go into the existing garden structure over here. Check it out. Our existing garden structure, but actually they're all existing. This is our older garden structure, one with the uh, UV tarp on it or uh, shade cloth. Um, the hydroponics was a pathetic disaster. We're just uh, busy with the livestock and different things, so we're going to let this go until next spring. <laughs> but we put perlite in it, and that was a big mistake. Um, it's just a lot better with gravel. We've we've done it with gravel before, and we didn't have the gravel to put in. So we had lots of perlite, as you can see the bag over there, and we got bags over here of perlite. So um the, the issue with the perlite is it makes a mess uh it floats too easily it gets down into the orifices where it drains into the tub and that's a big issue so we're going to go back to the pea gravel on this and i'm sure it'll, it'll be a lot better anyway let's take a look right over here we've got um these are some transplant from the cups we actually germinated from seed and then transplanted them in here. This is spinach. You can see there we've got about a half a dozen spinach plants, and they're doing real well. Very good plants. And the rest of this is more radish. <laughs> we planted a lot of radish. Um, one reason is because radish is very easy to grow. And as you can tell here, this is pretty much ready to harvest. We're going to harvest most of this today, if not all of it. I said in earlier videos, we love radish with barbacoa tacos and salads. I love it. I mean, some people, it's not for them. It may not be for you, but it gives your salads a little bite, a little spice. And it's healthy, very good for you. My favorite is in barbacoa tacos with onions, cilantro. Oh, that's the best. So anyway, let me pull one of these up. You can see, even without pulling them up here, you can see, you can see them right there. Look at that one. That's what we're looking at. See how big that one is. Anyway, we've got uh, quite a few of them in there. Time to harvest. We'll give some to family. We'll eat a bunch. And over in this bed, we have some broccoli, which has just been tore up by the pest, you can see. Just tore up. This, there's still barely hanging on, but I don't think they're going to make it through the winter. And the rest of this bed is yet to be um, composted. And we're going to put some chicken manure compost in this on the top of it, till it in, put leaves on it the same way, and put it to bed for the winter. Get rid of all the, the weeds. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Uh, again, this is Mark Cropper with Sustainable Frugal Living. We do our, share our videos. All of our videos are listed as Creative Commons use, which means feel free to share them. Uh, there's no copyright infringements or anything like that. 
we are sustainable, frugal living. And the idea is to uh, help others to away from the debt, be more productive, be more of a producer rather than a, just a consumer. In times of disaster and catastrophe and that sort of thing, which we've had, and you may have lived through that, uh, you know how important it is to have, you know, vital things like food, water, shelter. So, you know, check out our videos on our channel. That's what we're all about. We have our own videos. We share others' videos as well. Again, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe down below. If this is a shared video, you can just type in Sustainable Frugal Living, go to our website. We appreciate you. If you subscribe, give us a thumbs up. And as always, God bless.